So you may remember these cheap little uh, panel antennas that we took a look at on the channel recently and uh, even the uh, more you know the named ones were still rubbish inside and I said in uh, that video or one of those videos that these would make a really good case if you could get them cheap enough and uh, you could rip out the uh, guts that's in there and uh, replace it with a uh, decent antenna and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. So the antenna that I've chosen is a uh, double bi-quad, but it's a little bit different to uh, you know a normal bi-quad. Basically, I couldn't fit the double bi-quad along uh, the uh, horizontal line there inside the case, so I stacked it on top of each other, just like uh, you can see here. And I've also gone for the uh, circular bi-quad rather than the uh, more traditional bi quad that I've uh, got here. I just found it much easier to uh, make, you know, uh, quite a few of these and get it pretty accurate as well. A little bit fiddly uh, doing it this way. I mean, it's definitely doable, but uh, I can make, uh, you know, probably three of these in the time it takes me to make uh, one of these. So that's why I've gone for the circular one. But although it's circular, it must be noted, this is not a circular polarized antenna. It's uh, still a linear polarized antenna. So the things you're going to need to build this antenna is some uh, copper wire. This is about uh, one millimeter in diameter. I've stripped it out of uh, some multi-core earthing wire and you're going to need a decent reflector. I mean, the reflector that's in these uh, as they come, the aluminium tape is uh, next to useless as a uh, reflector. I mean, the front to back ratio of this is uh, pretty poor. But uh, I've got some uh, copper here. Now this is one millimeter thick copper Originally I did order uh, 0.5mm copper for this build but uh, the seller e emailed me said it was out of stock and uh, he offered to send me some 1mm for the same price. Uh, it adds a little bit to the weight but uh, again we're going to have an excellent front to back ratio using the 1mm copper. But if you can't get hold of that 0.5mm copper will work just as fine. Now you're also going to have to lift off the uh, elements away from the back reflector here and uh, because these uh, elements are so small because it's 5.8 gigahertz uh, it's a little bit tricky so do what I've done here I've just got a piece of uh, cork this is 5.5 uh, millimeters thick so I'm lifting the uh, elements uh, off away from the back reflector at 5.5 millimeters Anywhere in between uh, six millimeters to five millimeters is fine for this antenna. Uh, anything less or anything more, you're going to knock it out of that sweet spot. And uh, again, the, the reflected uh, energy won't combine constructively with uh, the energy from the elements themselves. It'll uh, interfere destructively if you don't have it in that sweet spot. But uh, anything five to six millimeters is fine. And using a full piece like this, rather than cutting out little segments and just trying to support the elements that way, it's uh, you know much easier to do it that way. And cork does make an excellent dielectric, although it can soak up moisture, but because it's confined inside this case, it's uh, nothing to worry about too much, but uh, it is a, an excellent dielectric as long as you don't get it wet. So first of all, I'm going to form the elements and uh, I've got a uh, piece of tube in here to help me form the uh, round elements and I'll just bring my notes in here. Uh, each coil, the total length if we stretch it out, needs to be 51.7 millimeters long. Now for the uh, tubing itself, the uh, circumference um, of that, uh, the diameter of the tubing that we need is 16.4 millimeters long. Now the thing is, this uh, copper wire is a little bit springy. So I've got my tube in here, which is uh, an old uh, antenna. And uh, what I did to get the diameter correct, uh, I used masking tape around here to uh, widen the diameter of this tubing and then covered it with some heat shrink tubing. And uh, the diameter of this is 15.2 millimeters uh, in diameter. Now you may be saying that, uh, well, that's less than 16.4 and it is. But because the copper wire is a little bit springy, as soon as I uh, remove the tension on it, it does spring out a little bit and then it springs out to exactly 16.4 millimeters long. So uh, that's why my uh, 
tube here is a little bit less than that is to take into consideration the uh, springiness of the copper wire if i uh, use some tubing at 16.4 millimeters then my elements would be too big and too long for 15.7 uh, millimeters so you need to be uh, careful with that uh, pr i mean most copper wire has the same kind of uh, tension to it so if you get some tubing and uh, make it up to 15.2 you should be uh, dead on the sweet spot so I'm going to form the coils now and I've got a little hole in here so it uh, holds the copper wire uh, in there so I don't have to worry too much about that and now I'm just going to apply some tension using my thumb to guide it around here and uh, I'm going to be making several elements out of uh, this length of copper wire so I've got my coils wrapped around there so I'll just let go now and you can see how it springs out now so I'm just going to cut this away here with some wire cutters and then we can pull it off this former so now I'm going to cut the coils out I'm going to uh, place my tin snips there carefully so then I've got several elements there more than I need for uh, one by quad uh, panel antenna anyway and each one of those elements is 51.7 millimeters long if we straighten them out so it's just a really easy way of doing them so I'm going to join two of the coils up to make the uh, by quad element I've just got them fastened down onto the back of a uh, old PCB just to keep them uh, straight while I uh, solder them so I'm just going to apply solder onto these two points here and here making sure not to bridge them across the middle of course So I'll do the same to two more and then we've got our elements made. So next we're going to have to uh, join the two elements now just like I have here we've got two legs here and here and I've got a rod going across here to connect them. Basically uh, these two are going to be connected to the ground plane and uh, this centre one is going to be our uh, main driven element connected to the centre core of the coax that's isolated from uh, the ground plane of course so I'm going to use some slightly thicker wire here this is uh, some uh, brazing rod and I'm going to be adding the two legs first and then joining them both together but I've got a piece of wood with a hole drilled in it just to help me now my hole is drilled down exactly 10 millimeters in length and that will give me enough length on uh, each leg that uh, I can connect it to the back reflector and just trim away anyway so what I'm going to do first is solder put some solder on the side of this leg just down here so I've now got my uh, element in place I've held it down with some masking tape as you can see and I can put a little bit of pressure on this side of the rod get my solder in iron and because they're both pre-tinned a little bit of solder on the tip there and just get some heat in there and just let that solder flow so now as you can see now that I've removed it I've got uh, a 10 millimeter length on this side and I can just snip away with my uh, wire cutters on this side and we've got a nice clean joint there that's really really strong so I've got the legs on both of my elements here but what we're going to do now is work on the back reflector next because uh, we're also going to use the back reflector as a jig to uh, support the elements to solder in this uh, cross piece here on the uh, elements themselves to join them both together and that's where we're going to be soldering in the center there so uh, the back reflector is going to help us hold everything down while we solder this cross piece in here so I've got the piece of copper here that's going to be our reflector and uh, it's basically a rectangle it measures 60 millimeters long and it's uh, 50 millimeters wide and that just fits nicely inside the case now I've gone ahead and drilled three holes in here and I've spaced them out I've drilled a center one directly in the middle of the uh, reflector and then uh, basically uh, one at either side 15 millimeters in from this side 15 millimeters in from this side and that just spaces everything out 
quite nicely and uh, I've got a piece of cork here that's going to sit we're going to glue it down into the middle here and that measures uh, 50 millimeters that way and uh, 40 millimeters that way so just a uh, slightly smaller than the uh, reflector itself so I'm going to glue this on here with some super glue and when that's set I'm going to drill holes all the way through using these as uh, pilot holes to drill through the cork so we can connect the elements up to the back reflector so I've got my cork super glued to the uh, reflector there and I've drilled holes all the way through and now if we get one of the elements you can see that uh, this leg pokes through just enough for me to uh, get some tin on there solder it in place and just snip away any excess so what we're going to do now is place both of the elements onto the cork like so and I'm going to hold these down with some masking tape and uh, I've got a couple of pieces of scrap wood here just uh, because uh, you know it's the uh, legs stick out a little bit on the back there and uh, I'm going to hold that in place with the masking tape and then I can uh, cut uh, another piece of the uh, brazing rod here and cut that to length and then solder that in place and then I should be able to lift everything out using the reflector as a jig So using the uh, reflector as a jig is really, really helpful because trying to solder everything in place, the copper does, uh, you know, radiate the heat away pretty quickly. And uh, if you keep your soldering iron on too long, you can actually end up desoldering things, especially when you're doing something so small as this. So this way, hopefully, it'll be a little bit easier for you. So now that I've removed the masking tape, we can just lift the element off. And what we've created now is a really, really strong element. We've got really good solder joints on these two legs here and this cross piece on here. If you tried to do it just flat on the bench, uh, it would be really, really difficult, especially to get everything nice and straight. So now that I've got my uh, reflector prepared, now I've drilled the holes through the cork and uh, it's glued in place there. I'm about to put everything together now. So I've got my uh, elements here and I've got a length of uh, black wire here and it's uh, insulated and it needs to be insulated away from the uh, back reflector and that's the reason I'm using this wire and I've put a little hook shape shape on the top there and what I can do is hook it on in the middle here and I can solder that in place when I get everything connected together but what I can do now is put all three of these connections through the three holes like so and then I can solder these two legs on the back here and here and I've got this length of wire that I can cut back to solder the uh, signal uh, part of the coax the center part of the coax too so these two are two grounds and this is the uh, signal part of the coax it needs to be insulated as you can see here otherwise it just ground out to the uh, back reflector so I've got the antenna ready now, ready to connect into the uh, case and solder onto the coax. And uh, you can see here I've put some masking tape there just to make doubly sure that we don't ground out onto the uh, back reflector here. And, uh, you know, I've trimmed down that wire a little bit as well and pre-tinned it. So we're going to solder this in place. Basically, uh, the outside of the coax here is going to be soldered down here and then uh, the main center core going to be soldered here and uh, I've put this double sided foam tape on here as well and that, you, that will be enough to stick it onto the back of the case here it's uh, double sided foam tape it's uh, solders insulation but I've doubled it up just to make it a little bit thicker so that's everything soldered in place so I'm about to stick it down onto this uh, double sided foam here should do a good enough job holding it in place so get it as straight as possible and then apply a little bit of pressure so let's take it over to the spectrum analyzer then and have a look and see how good it is so here's the output then on the spectrum analyzer and I have to say it's uh, very nice I've got the spectrum analyzer centered on 5.8 gigahertz here we've got this uh, frequency response here it's quite a wide one and uh, you can see here 5.8 gigahertz all the way up to probably around uh, 5.80 gigahertz and down here at uh, 5.750 gigahertz but certainly in the range that we want it to work at at the uh, 5.8 gigahertz 
a really really nice frequency response so I'm pretty pleased with that now when you look at uh, this bandwidth here this uh, wide range you, the way to make that a little bit wider would be to use a slightly thicker wire but it's a little bit tricky at uh, 5.8 gigahertz because uh, everything is so small but you could probably go up a little bit in thickness to say uh, 1.5 millimeter and you would extend this uh, range of uh, operation just here just by uh, you know altering the thickness of the wire but uh, even as it stands here with the uh, frequency of operation if you were to use this on your quadcopter at 5.8 gigahertz or even 5.45 gigahertz up here then uh, I don't think you'd be disappointed with the performance so not a bad uh, output then on the spectrum analyzer as far as uh, 5.8 gigahertz goes I don't think you'll be uh, disappointed in this but uh, let's talk about gain for a moment and uh, you know specifically the uh, biquad antenna now a single biquad will operate at uh, around 9 dB uh, you can improve the performance of uh, that biquad by uh, adding a much thicker uh, reflector so if you're going to use a, a PCB for instance um, you know if you used a, a thick piece of copper like this it this will have uh, slightly more forward power uh, because uh, you, your front to back ratio is a little bit better and not a lot of your signal is going behind where you don't necessarily want it with a uh, directional antenna but uh, a single biquad is around 9 dBi a double biquad uh, constructed well will operate at around 11 dBi and uh, if you look on the back of this case here it says uh, 11 dBi on the back but we know from previous videos that these don't uh, operate as standard at 11 dBi so this is probably operating at uh, 11 dBi or slightly uh, more than that with the thicker reflector so at least we're spot on with the uh, markings on the case now but uh, you can't get away from the fact that uh, a single bi-quad works at 9 dBi and a double one works around 11 dBi. I did get into a bit of uh, an argument with somebody in the comments of one of my older videos and uh, I said, you know, a single bi-quad cannot work at 16 dBi and uh, as evidence he ended up showing me uh, a, a, an eBay uh, advertisement for a single biquad where the seller was claiming 16 dbi but uh, it's impossible to uh, get a single biquad to work at that kind of level and uh, generally with most antennas you can uh, get a feel for the dbi you know there's there's nothing magical about it it's in the mathematics and uh, you know i always err on the side of caution and say a double biquad is 11 dbi it's probably a little bit under than uh, what a, a double biquad is maybe you can get up to 12 dbi but i like to underestimate uh, the dbi of an antenna where if you look at a lot of the uh, ebay advertisements for antennas that are for sale on there you'll see see people overcooking them and they get into a bit of a war between uh, the different chinese sellers and it can get a little bit silly but uh, if you construct one of these well you should be able to get around 11 dbi out of it and what makes this particularly good for uh, FPV as well is the arrangement of the double biquad being stacked on top of each other. Basically, if you've got this uh, upright vertical like this, you're going to have a much wider beam width coming uh, from bottom to top and uh, less of a beam width going uh, out, you know, in the uh, horizontal, which possibly for a uh, quadcopter might be a lot handier than having all that uh, beam width going off in the horizontal possibly it work better in the uh, vertical I don't know so I've managed to uh, get hold of a few of these cases I uh, bought some off eBay from a seller he did me a bit of a deal and uh, he shipped out 10 cases to me and uh, I've made them up and uh, I'll pop them in the shop I've also uh, painted this uh, cork here black just because I'm going to have to take a picture of this on the eBay store just to show people what's inside one of these it's not like the normal crap that you find in uh, one of these type of cases but uh, if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up if you have a go at making one please uh, let us know in the comments how you got on and uh, if you've managed to test it how well it works for you and uh, any comments or questions drop them below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.